morning and welcome to the Cowboy Church in Orange County. We're excited about you being with us in our YouTube ministry today. The subscribers continues to grow. There's a couple of things I want to say to you this morning besides just our service and that the message is so specific that it has a specific plan, a specific purpose, and a specific people. And I believe that you and I are those people, and I want to encourage you to watch this message today. But I also want to encourage you, we have a new ministry that has started for the next 90 days, and that, that uh, ministry is called From the Deer Stand. If you haven't watched that, watch it. You may have somebody you want to send it to. God bless you. Get ready for a great message today. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Hey, I do want to welcome those that are from Canada. Welcome to church Texas style. Amen. Amen. Oh, that's awesome. I want to bring a message to you today out of the book of Jonah. Say Jonah. And I'm just going to, I usually try to explain to you where it's at. I'm just going to tell you good luck. Look in the front part. It tells you what page it's on. Jonah, the book of Jonah. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, this is just amazing. So between the two services, we have 430 people here today. That's amazing. In my notes, I have scriptures for two chapters to read and it's just too much it's too much to read and so if you will humor me and just help me along here if you know the story of Jonah say amen amen amen, amen. so I'm going to hope that sounded like the most of you and I want to start this off though in in, in the very first verse of the first book of Jonah, and it's going to be vitally important because there are, I am going to go back and forth with some of these scriptures, but I, I just don't want to read the whole thing to you. It's quite lengthy. But understanding the story of Jonah, I want to start with verse 1, and it says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah. The, the word. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. Today, the word of the Lord has come to the Cowboy Church of Orange County. Amen. The word has come. The word has come. Our message today is a specific plan, a specific purpose, and a specific people. Give the Lord a hand praise. God, God, has, God, God has a word, and, and I, I hope that you, I hope you're intrigued with this thought. The same God that gave Jonah a word gives you a word today. That same God today gives you a word. And you know what that word was. It was go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it. Now, <laughs> you got to understand what God was asking Jonah to do. It wasn't real lighthearted. First of all, I want you to know that, that Jonah hated the Ninevites. But you also need to know that the Ninevites hated Jonah. Jonah was a bigot in our society today. He was very prejudiced. He absolutely did not associate himself at all with Ninevites. And not only did God ask Jonah to go to Nineveh, but it would be like he told them, we'll compare the biggest communist country that we have in our world today. If they called what we call the White House, as we do in Washington, it would be if God called you to that communist country and go stand on the steps of their White House and preach against the sin of their ruler, you might think twice about doing that. For one thing, you might get away with that 
in the good old U.S. of A. But in other countries, they would chop your head off on national television. They would cut your head off on national television. I'm not going to go there. I'll stay politically correct as I possibly can. But I will go this far and tell you some of the things that's wrong in this nation today is because people don't get their hands spanked hard enough. Especially my flag burners. You may say you have a right to burn the flag, but it's not the right thing to do. And the only reason you have that right is for those men and women that, women that have lost their blood to give you that right. Amen. Amen. A specific plan. That, and so let me, rather than these scriptures, let me fast forward the story. So God says, Jonah, here's what you're going to do. And Jonah says, no, I'm not. Say, uh-oh. No, I'm not. And the Bible says that Jonah ran from God. Now, if you study a little biblical history, you'll find out that when all of it was over, the running is that he was actually 500 miles further away than where God wanted him to be to begin with. And here's what I want you to know about your life and mine this morning. When I'm standing right here and God tells me to do something and I don't do it, it all doesn't take long before I'm a lot further from God than I ever dreamt I'd ever get. I know I'm not the only one that's ever found myself in a place spiritually that thought, wow, how did I ever get here? And it all started with just a simple thing that God asked me to do that I said no to. If you can relate, say amen. If you can't relate, look at the person next to you and go, I bet you can though. <laughs> what, I'm telling, what I'm telling you is that, that God spoke to Jonah. Jonah said no, and he ran from the Lord, and he associated himself with some people. He went on to the boat, and a great wind and a great storm come about. And I want you to know that, that you may not be able to relate to this kind of storm. Well, never mind, y'all are from Orange County, amen. You may not be able to relate to this kind of storm, but I want you to understand this was a storm that scared men that lived their life on the sea. This was a storm that scared men that it's what they did as their profession. And in everything that we see here, they begin to literally begin to fear for their lives. And Jonah went to them. And he says, men, I can tell you what's wrong. And the Bible says that Jonah told him the story about him running from God and said, your only salvation, your only hope is that if you take me and cast me overboard. Wow. So the Bible says that they got together, they did whatever they did, and they took Jonah and they cast him overboard. Now here's the fun thing about God. When God has a specific plan, when God has a specific purpose, and when God has a specific people that he has called this church to use, we can't run far enough that God won't use us. But I want you to know there's an easier journey that Jonah took, and I'm praying the Cowboy Church of Orange County wants that easy road. Look at your neighbors, say, beware of the well. You see, because God has a word for you this morning. If you're here under the sound of my, it is that God has a word for you too. And, and, and I know that many of you today would say, I would never tell God no. No way God could ask me to do something and I would say no. May I help you just for a moment? Everything, if you belong to the Lord, if you belong to the Lord, raise your hand. Amen. If everything that God has in his word that he is asking of you and you're not doing it, symbolically you are running from the word of God. Say amen. A word came to Jonah. A word came to Jonah. A word comes to you and I. And if we're not submitting to that word, we're in a form of rebellion against God. 
But I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. I'm so glad. I could just go on. I get so excited, I could do a Pentecostal shouting run around when I think that even though, even though Jonah said no to God, even though he ran 500 miles away, when they threw him overboard, God said, I'm not through with that boy yet. I want you to know there was a day in my life that I, I, I was one day I'm living for the Lord and the next thing I know I find myself in every sin of this world and sin was on me. I, I had the, the gunk of the world on me and I had a woman of God and I had a God that said I ain't through with this boy yet and Jesus rescued me. God's not done with you yet. I don't care if you're here this morning and you've told him no. A disaster has come upon your life. I want you to know that the Lord provided. Say, God will provide. I don't know how we're going to buy enough donuts to feed all you hungry diabetics, but God's going to provide. Say, amen. I don't know how we're going to fit more people in this place. We already this morning already at 80%. I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't know what March is going to bring. I don't even know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds my tomorrow. Would you say amen? Amen. Amen. I think this place may fill up with people from Canada. They hear what's going on around this place. Amen. Amen. No, truthfully, I say just bring, bring God, God, bring God to your people too. Amen. Bring God, bring God. Listen to me. I don't know how all this is going to be, but I know that even in Jonah's life, the Bible says God provided a great fish. A great fish. Now, I'm a nerd when it comes to fishing. And I've done some research on how big of a fish would it take to actually be able to swallow a man. I have a friend of mine who actually does some diving at Rayburn and was at the, the, the dam, at Rayburn Dam one time. And he was with another guy. And as he was at the dam, and you've, you've heard some of these stories before, he validates it in, in my life. He said that he thought the guy was tugging on his air tank. And he finally turned around with the light and said, would you stop? And the guy's over to his right and not behind him. And he turns around, there's a catfish doing his gills open like that. I would have walked on water. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you, I hadn't caught that big rascal yet, but I've gone a bunch trying. And that, kid, that catfish, there is, by the way, there's not a catfish that can swallow a man. You don't have to believe that. But there is a fish that can swallow a man. There's actually only one that we know of scientifically. And as my granddaughter would say it, if you want to know what that is, then you just need to get on a computer and you need to gargle it. <laughs> Amen. I'm not going to give my secret away. What I'm going to tell you is that the Lord provided a great fish, and the Bible says that that great fish swallowed Jonah. Go with me for a moment. We've now entered the mouth of a well. We're sliding down the giant esophagus like it's a slide. What do you call those things we bring our children to? The slipping, yeah, the slitter bond or something like that. And they go through that tube, come out on the other side. You're now entering the esophagus of this huge well. And you, you dump into what is one of three stomachs. The acid in that stomach prepares you for it to projectile you into stomach number two. And then that acid wash prepares you so that it projectiles you into stomach number three. And then at stomach number three, the acid is so strong that it's supposed to dissolve whatever is in there over a period of a few days. Now I know that you're here today and you think, <laughs> I've had some problems in my life. Here's, here's something that I wanna give you real quick. You, you usually don't hear a preacher tell you this. You've either gone through some stuff or you're going through some stuff or believe this, you're gonna go through some stuff. Anybody that preaches a different message than that, I don't listen to them. But I know that, that same God that provided that whale 
is the same God that in the middle of your stuff today, he knows what you're going through, and he's already provided another way clear if you but yet but call on him. Isn't that a good, that's a good message right there, that'll preach. If I gave $10 this morning, I'd give another 10, amen. That's good preaching. That, that you serve a God. You serve a God that knows exactly what you're going through. And no matter what it is, you can know that there's, there, he's, he's, got, he's already, he's, he does, you know what? You don't know what you're going to go through this week, but he knows and he's already made the provisions for it. Amen. And so listen to what Jonah said as he's in the belly of the whale real quick. In my distress, can you imagine? I called on the Lord. Don't you know that the other fish that was surrounding this big whale wondered what was coming out of that whale's belly going, Help! <laughs> Help! I don't know. I just know it says he cried out to God. <laughs> I know if I was fishing on Rayburn and I caught a big bass, I don't care if it was big enough to put on the wall or not. If I lifted up that thing and something out of that bass's mouth went, help me, Jesus, I would put that bass back in the water. <laughs> I wouldn't dare hurt that fish. He says, from the deep in the realm of the dead. He thought he was dead. I called out for help. I'm here to tell you today that Satan has put so much on so many people that you even think maybe you're dead dead. You think, I can't survive this. I want to tell you that between these two services today, I had a person that came to me, a sweet young lady, a sweet young lady, and told me about how she had been abused uh, throughout her life and how that, that she had this issue and she had that issue and she didn't even get to hear the message this morning. And she looked at me with tears coming down her face, with tears coming down her face, and she goes, but I know that God is going to give me a better life if I'll just believe. And I said, sister, there's a hundred and something people that heard that this morning that didn't even get it. You haven't heard, and you do get it. Say glory to God. I want to tell you what I believe about that. I believe that the Holy Spirit was so strong in this place that the Holy Spirit filtered where that's the, over into the other building, and I believe it touched life this morning. The disciples walked around, and people that was under their shadow would get healed. Oh, that's, that's the anointing. Say amen. That's the anointing. He said, I've been banished from your sight, yet I look again toward your holy temple. We're here this morning to say, Lord, I know I've been through a lot, but I'm putting my face back on you. God, I know I've been having my, look, here's what I believe. So many times we put our eyes on the storm instead of the master of the storm. Say hallelujah. Say thank you, Lord. Amen. Lord, well, we, we put our eyes, and Jonah's crying out. He says, Lord, I put my eyes towards your temple. The engulfing waters, they threatened me to think that I would die. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. Don't you know Jonah was a sight to see? Seaweed was wrapped around my head. I sank to the roots of the mountain, and the earth beneath me bared in me forever for you, O oh God, brought my life up from the pit. When life was ebbing away, he thought he was dying. Ah, there ain't no hope. He's like, oh, uh, what was that? Uh, what was that comedian years ago it used to be on that show? So I'm having the big one. <laughs> Ethel, <laughs> was it? Was who did he call out to? Ethel, Esther. 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 Oh, y'all don't know. Y'all all saying something different. <laughs> all I know is he would say it's the big one. <laughs> I'm having the big one. I believe Jonah was in the belly of the well, and he was saying, Ooh, I think this is it. I think this is it. And listen to me. You know that Jonah didn't want to die that far out of God's will. God would have never called him to begin with if he didn't love God. God would have never called him if he hadn't walked with him in the past. You're talking about a man of God that overnight told God no and is in the belly of a well. Be careful you have too much self-pride. Ooh. The devil will sneak in there on you like you can't imagine. Listen to what he said. But Lord, I'm asking you if you'll bring my life up out of the pit. Lord, if you'll hear my cry, you'll get me out of this situation. Lord, I will make good what you've asked me to do. I will go to Nineveh and I'll tell those heathens salvation comes from the Lord. And bleh, the well threw up. Eat. 
Even a whale can't stomach a Christian that's out of God's will. That's funny right there. Now I want you to bear with me a couple more minutes. So here's this Ninevite fisherman minding his own business. He hadn't bothered anybody. He don't owe any taxes. His wife's out of town at the flea market. (laughs) He's just enjoying some peace. I wasn't talking about you, darling. (laughs) Some peace and quiet. Just enjoying some fishing. And all of a sudden, he hears this sound. And he looks to his right. And there's this man that's been in the belly of a whale for three days. Bleached white from the gases in the whale's stomach. Seaweed wrapped all around him. I don't know how many of you remember your children when they threw up. But both of our children, when they threw up, Dee and I wondered if it was demonic. How can that much throw up even belong in a child? So I can't imagine when that whale went, what that must have looked like. Can I help you since you're going to eat in a minute? I can't imagine, I can't imagine what that smelled like. Look at your neighbor and say, I hope he quits pretty quick. <laughs> and Jonah looks at this guy. I mean, the fisherman looks at this guy, and Jonah goes, Repent! I don't know what you would do, but I would repent. All right, that's the introduction. The five points are very quick. I want you to listen close to me. Every time something bad happens in your life, quit looking at the bad. And lesson one in this is that in Jonah's experience, in the belly of that whale, it provided him a unique opportunity to be delivered into something he would never go back into bondage to again. Are you hearing me? There are things in our life that trip us up. We'll go for a year or two, and that thing's tripping us up again. We'll go for a month, six weeks, and that thing's tripping us up again. I'm telling you that today God is giving you a word, and he's saying my children have no business with addictions in their life, and you need to be delivered. And the very bad that you've been through, rather than hiding in your shame, cry out to God from the belly of the well that you're in and let God deliver you this morning. That deserved a better amen. Amen. Let God deliver you today. Listen to me. The first thing when something bad happens is we'll get on Facebook and ask everybody to pray us through. What we need to do is we need to quit asking people to pray us. Quit, don't, don't even ask them to, to, to help to pray you through that. Ask them, ask them, reveal to me in this storm that I'm in what it is that God needs me to know so that when I come out of this storm, I'm a better me. That's what God's asking you to do this morning. That's what he's asking me to do this morning. Cry out to God, but don't cry out necessarily just for deliverance. God, God, what, what, how can I be a better me when I get done with this? Lesson number two is that very bad thing that happened in Jonah's life. It brought about the single most fantastic revival and being used of God that he had ever experienced. That's why I say don't give up on the brink of your miracle. Don't give up on the brink of your miracle. The very things that you're going through today, 
If you're under the sound of my voice, whether it be here, whether it be on our YouTube ministry, I know that all of us go through some things, but I'm here today to tell you that if you're in the belly of that whale, you're in that circumstance, you're in that situation, you cannot even see your way out of it. I'm telling you that my God, say my God. My God has a specific plan and a specific purpose and a specific people that's going to get you out of this thing and you're going to come out the victor on the other side stronger than when you went into your trial. And I claim that in Jesus' name for my life. I claim that in Jesus' name for your life. It was not only the most personal revival that he could have experienced, but God, now, now watch, one day I'm walking with God. Next day I'm running from God. Next day I'm in the belly of the well. Next day I'm preaching in the greatest revival that's ever come. That's why I tell people all the time that come to me, that want to talk to me about somebody else, well, you know, before you use them, you better understand here's what they did. Ooh, before they get up here and do that, you better understand, this is where they was last week, and then they was over here this week, now they're over here this week. What I'm going to tell you is just talk to Jonah about that, see what he says. The greatest revival that we read about in the history of the church came about with a man that hours before that had ran from God and had well poop all over him. I think some of y'all's got some well junk on you. Come on. Look at your neighbor and go. <laughs> what I'm telling you, folks, we have to live in this world, but we don't have to be of the world. But we, even when you live in this world, you're going to get some of this world's junk on you. I'm telling you, cry out to your God, and he will deliver you from that. Amen. Lesson number three is this. There was an absolute plan for Jonah. God had it. There was an absolute specific purpose for God, and Jonah had it. And there was a specific people that he wanted Jonah to reach, and that was the people at Nineveh. And I'm going I'm to help you real quick. There's no doubt in my mind, and I've already said it, and you applauded, and that's great. But God has a specific plan for the Cowboy Church of Orange County. He has a specific purpose for the Cowboy Church of Orange County. And I'm telling you, the people in Orange County are the specific people that he's called us to. And I do believe this church will be a lighthouse that it's never been in the last 15 years. And I think that time is now. Amen. I do. I, and, and don't you take this wrong. I'm not saying we haven't been. I'm saying that that light will shine greater. I believe we'll reach greater. I, I, think, I think our harvest is coming in. Say amen. There's been seed that's been planted. There's been dreams that have been planted. There's been soil that's been, that's been tilled. I'm telling you, God's purpose, the, the, say the time is now. The time is now. The time is now. The time is now. Now listen, we can decide not to do it. It may have been too complicated. The parking may have been horrible this morning. I, I have no idea. I, I, I hid from everybody as long as I could to rest to do this the second time. And, and I may be bombarded today with text messages and emails saying, Pastor, that was horrible. This was this. It 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 was this. What I'm going to tell you is, is it doesn't matter how bad it was. It doesn't matter what the transition is. It doesn't matter what we need to do. My God has provided. My God has provided. My God has provided. I, what I'm telling you, if there's something different, hey, we'll get us. I'll get with my lay pastors and elders. I'll take some money out of their wallet. I'll get you some more donuts. Amen. <laughs> what I'm telling you, folks, as this church continues to grow, parking is going to be an issue. But my God, getting here on time and somebody being in your parking spot, don't you act like it ain't true. That's your parking spot. But my God, say amen. There's going to be logistical things that, listen, we're going to have to figure out over the next few weeks, but we're going to figure them out to the honor and the glory of God's kingdom because he has a plan, he has a purpose, and Orange County is our specific people that we need to reach. We will figure it out. Say amen. amen. We will figure it out. Listen to me. Lesson number four. Lesson number four. There was an absolute purpose in what Jonah did, and that was to bring the message of Christ to the world. Now, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to abbreviate this just a little bit. God said, if Nineveh doesn't repent, I'm going to kill all of them. If Nineveh doesn't repent, I'm going to kill all of them. You see this sweet little thing right here drinking that little cup? 
Turn around and look at that little baby that Papa's holding back here. You see that? I want you to hear me. God said, if they don't repent, I'm going to kill all of them. Let's see, we're getting down to some dirty now. Because old Papa here, he don't mind if I whoop him. But I better not touch that baby. <laughs> Give me some right there. <laughs> Do you understand me that God was so specific to Jonah that he said, I'm even going to kill their livestock. I'm going to kill their livestock. I'm going to kill their horses. I'm going to kill their cows. I'm going to kill everything that's in that place if they don't repent. I want you to listen to me. This county is lost and dying without Jesus Christ. And they will die without Jesus if we do not do what God has called us to do and they will spend eternity in a devil's hell if they do not repent and accept Christ as their Savior the problem that I have with that is God's called you to give the message to them so that that doesn't have to happen I hope you believe that Luke says it like this 1423 and the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. One more time and I close. God has a specific plan for you. He has a specific purpose. He has a specific people for this church and for you. Will you commit to that plan and purpose? If you won't, I want you to look at your neighbor again one more time and say, look out for the well. If you won't, you better look out for the well. There are some things in your life that you've been ready to be set free from from years. We're fixing to have an invitation. We're going to have some people up here that you can come and pray with. If you want them to anoint you with all they can. If you don't, they don't have to. If you just want to come right here and put your hand on this altar and bow your head and pray. I don't know what your decision is today. Maybe you need Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I want to give you this and close. In Jonah chapter 1, Jonah ran from God. In Jonah chapter 2, in distress he called out to him. In Jonah, the Lord provided. And then in Jonah, when God saw it, because Nineveh repented, and he spared all their lives. Don't we serve a good, good God? Oh, we've got a good, good God this morning.